Examiner.com is here at the Houston Grand Opera Library speaking with Grammy-winning opera star and baritone Daniel Belcher. He's in town to uh, star in one of the Houston Grand Opera performances. And uh, Daniel, could you please tell us what you're here for this time? Yeah, I'm singing the role of Taddeo in uh, The Italian Girl from Algiers. Uh, it's actually the first time the opera's been performed. It's a great classic comedy by Rossini. Uh, kind of in the, the vein of Barbara Seville and Cinderella. You achieved great acclaim with your portrayal of the, the Rossini characters, mm -hmm. and you've uh, done Tadeo before, yep. and, and you've also had great reviews for Figaro and uh, Dandini. Could you say a few words about r the Rossini characters, and uh, being that this opera hasn't been performed here before, uh, say a few words about this opera in particular and, and how Tadeo fits into that framework? Sure. Uh, like I said, these are great comedies. Um, it's something that everyone can find joy in, and the, the music is a typical Rossini, lots of fast notes, lots of color, lots of fireworks, and a lot of great comedy too. Uh, this is the third production from the team of the Comediants that brought uh, their production of Cinderella here, and their production of Barbara Seville. This production has already appeared in Florence and in Barcelona and, oh, good grief, somewhere else I'm not thinking of. Uh, but anyway, I think this is the fourth, oh, Madrid, Madrid, there we go. Um, and so this is the fourth time uh, uh, this production of Italian Girl has been performed. And so it's, it's wonderful to come to it with Joan, with the two Joans, as I call them, the designer and the director. Uh, they bring such a joie de vivre to the whole process. Um, they, the, play, the piece can be played for slapstick, uh, but what I love about it is they treat everyone as, as human beings, honest, real people tossed into a completely insane situation. And this is a perfect example of an insane situation. Uh, a young lady uh, who is accompanied by myself, Tadeo, uh, goes in search of her, her true love who has been kidnapped um, into the the, the, the seraglio of a, of a great bayi in Algiers. Her ship just happens to get shipwrecked right there in Algiers, and they rediscover each other in the court of the bayi. So, needless to say, between the clash of cultures, uh, a lot of crazy things go on. That sounds really fun. Um, now you have a, a very large repertoire. You've been really busy yep. the last few years. Yep. And I looked at your website, you have like 44 plus characters in your suggested repertoire, which this is one of them. Yeah. And so even though it's new for us here at HGO, you've done it before. Could you please say a, a couple words about what it's like for you to do a character that you're very familiar with and comfortable with that's in your repertoire that you've done many times versus learning a new character and a new part when sure. you go to a new opera? Sure. Uh, Tadeo is one of those, what, what I call them my roles that are old friends. Uh, every time I take them out, it's kind of like reacquainting myself with uh, with an old friend. Um, the things that have changed are I'm in a different place in life, uh, I come into a new production with a new conductor, a whole new cast uh, of singing actors that I've never worked with before, and we're like kids in a sandbox. We just kind of take the toys and then go from there. We try and play and, and create and, and tell the story anew. At the same time, I'm, I'm very lucky to work with uh, a lot of living composers. Um, and where I'm creating roles. So, whereas that's a completely different experience as this one where I'm really kind of shaking hands with, uh, with a good old friend. And then when you take on a new character, obviously you have done that already 44 mm -hmm. times because yeah. of your repertoire. What's, how do you approach a new character? Is it any different than that? Well, sure it is. Um, if it's a historical character, I try to, to study the history of that person, or if it's if it's based on a play, I try to study the play or the novella or the novel that uh, the material has come from. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's the composer and the librettist's take on the story. So I have to honor, you know, the, the opinion they're going for. Uh, I was lucky enough to train here with the uh, Houston Grand Opera in their opera studio and was exposed to a lot of new music. Uh, did world premieres of Jackie O, Little Women, uh, and Todd Mock's over his resurrection when I was in the studio. And, and that has gone on to give me so many opportunities performing such roles in Angels in America, um, L'Amour de Loin, which we won the Grammy Award for, 
uh, a new project in a couple of years, a uh, return engagement this, this winter with Kaya Sariajo and the Takama Society. So it, uh, it, it is part of the fabric, uh, kind of half and half, new and old with what I do. I wanted to jump into that a little bit more uh, of the fact that you are an HGO Studio alumnus sure. and that was part of your um, upbringing as a, as a performer. Can you say a few more words about what that experience of being in the, in the studio is like for you? Uh, very easily enough, uh, I have a career because of this company uh, and because of the, the training I received in the HGO Studio. Um, it is very well known amongst the community here how well it is how important the studio is to the fabric of the company. But what I think a lot of patrons don't realize is in terms of the musical world, how important this training program is and how revered it is. Um, many times I'm in Europe, I'm in Asia, and people say, oh, you trained in Houston. I understand. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, I always call this my second home. Uh, and you've been here many times. And I've been here many Walter. times. Yeah, I trained from '97 to '99, and I think this is my sixth or seventh roll back since I was in the studio. And it's always it's like coming home and seeing family again. That's great. Yeah. Let's take it back one notch before that. As a young man, how did you come to realize that you had the desire and talent to possibly sing opera as a career? And and what has your journey been like? Well, the word of a career uh, was one that never really crossed my mind in terms of music and uh, performing. I grew up uh, in Missouri. My, uh, neither of my parents were musical. Um, I happened to stumble into music. I grew up as a pianist, uh, sang in school choirs and church choirs, and luckily along the way a couple people said, I think you've got something there that uh, needs to be uh, fostered. So I went to, to undergrad, pursued a degree in music, and I kept thinking, well, as long as another door opens, I'll walk through it. And that led me to Juilliard, which led me here to Houston, and uh, it's it's really exactly what's happened. Uh, you know, life got, life goes by so fast, and you have a few chances to make choices. And I'm really fortunate that my path kind of led this way. Well, you've had tremendous success, and you continue to do so. And it's uh, it's it's really nice to see somebody that goes out there and really makes it big, let's say, as, as the saying goes, and, and is getting such good reviews. Um, finally, let's, let's get back to this Grammy issue. Yeah. Okay, now not everybody's got a Grammy. I do not have a Grammy. Now, to, please, for your Houston fans, could you take us through the process of what was it like to, to do the recording and then find out you'd been nominated for a Grammy and then actually find out that you'd won a Grammy? Sure. Um, we recorded in 2006 and 2008 uh, in Berlin. Um, I was asked uh, when I was singing the role of Prior Walter in uh, Angels in America in 2004 to do this project of uh, La Mode de Loin, Kaya Sariapa with Kent Nagano. And um, I had done numerous recordings, but it was the first time I'd done a studio recording. So actually hearing about the Grammy was, I, I received a text early one morning uh, from a, a former studio alum, Liam Bonner, and said, congratulations on the nomination. And I was like, is he talking about? And then I started getting other texts, and I'm like, what is this about? So it was actually thanks to Liam that I found out about the nomination. Well, my wife and I thought, well, you know, this is, why not? Let's go to L.A. See, you know, we, can, we worked it out with two companies to get a day off. Um, I didn't know if anyone else was going to be there from the recording. So we, we went, and uh, my wife leaned over and says, do you have anything to say just in case you win? And I'm like... No, not at all. That's the furthest thing from my mind. Sure enough, we win, and I run up to the stage. No one else is there from the recording. So uh, I, uh, in the moment, I wasn't quite sure what I was saying, but luckily, through the wonders of technology, I was able to go back and, and watch it, and I didn't uh, make a complete fool out of myself. But it was an out-of-body experience, to say the least. That's great. Um, just to add one more footnote to this interview, I've heard you speak of your daughter yeah. and your dad, uh, your, your life as a dad, uh, yeah. uh, driving her to Girl Scouts. Tell, you've got this great opera career going, which is fantastic, but tell us what it's like to be a father and, and have a little girl and take her to Girl Scouts. I mean, that's got to be great. It's, it's the best of all possible worlds, to, uh, to quote uh, Mr. Voltaire. Um, yeah, my daughter is eight years old. My wife is a stage director for the Metropolitan Opera, but we happen to live in Kansas City. Um, it's an area I grew up in, uh, where I went to college. Uh, it's really home, and uh, we chose to base our lives and raise our daughter 
in a place that we thought, you know, she could have the experience of theater when we're traveling, but also could have kind of the, the normal life, growing up, going to school, participating in Girl Scouts. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the PTA parents in charge of the skating parties. I take her to dance classes. I mow the lawn. I just happen to be the singer down at the end of the street. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite wonderful, quite wonderful. Well, that's great, Daniel. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks Absolutely. for spending some time with examiner.com, and we look forward to seeing you in, as Tadeo in uh, Italian Girl in Algiers. You're going to have a great time. Trust me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks.